Hey guys, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're going to start working on the cover for Alice's Tea Party. And I've chosen this, which is from the Patterns and Solids uh, 12 by 12 pack, uh, to go on here as our spine. And then I've chosen this plaid to be the cover. So this is from the 12 by 12 collection, so it's the larger scale plaid from the 12 by 12. I'm going to go ahead and get started. So we've done this before. What I like to do is take off a few strips of the backing on the adhesive and get those placed correctly and then slowly peel off the rest of them going side to side. And you're going to want to make sure it's not fully flat or fully closed. Um, if it's a, at about a 45 degree angle um, from about a 45 degree angle here, this, um, we should, or actually if you looked at it this way, it'd be about 45 degrees. Um, you should be able to get this on and slowly work it into place without it um, cracking on you. So the other key to that is to cover the back of this with tape. And because there's just a little bit of space in between each line of tape, it'll allow for a little bit of movement and stretching of the paper as it's applied. Okay, so I'm gonna get started by taking off, um, I don't know, three or four of the center pieces to get this lined up, and then we'll start laying it down. Let's see, we'll take off one more here. Okay, and so I've taken off three rows, and so the idea is, you know, you've got a little bit of play on either side to get it straightened out, and even if you have to lift it, you're only lifting the center piece. So I like to get it centered top to bottom, make sure it's straight. That was not centered. Oops, I pressed down. It doesn't matter if it's open 45 degrees right now because we're not coming around the sides. Get it centered left to right. I mean, top to bottom. <laughs> In, in this orientation, left to right. That looks pretty good. And then I'm just holding, tacking it down, but I wanna wrap it and see if it's coming across the front and back straight. And it looks like it is, so I'm gonna go ahead and press this more firmly into place and then check again. Yeah, so I'm, I'm checking to make sure it's not drifting up or down. And I'm looking on both sides, it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna burnish this into place and then I'm gonna start lifting and taking off the rest of the backing. Okay, and I like to go back and forth. Um, one strip off one side, then flip it over, do the other side and go back and forth. So you're working from the center out on both sides. The first couple are a little challenging because you gotta kinda get your tool to go around the corner. I think this is the first one where that 45 degree angle starts to become important.
Okay. Okay, got a couple strips left on that side. By the way, um, I'm using 3 8 inch tape here. Um, a lot of times I, I use 5 8 and 3 8 and I just didn't have any 5 8 I just went through all of that, so... Last two. Okay, so this comes over a little bit further, so I think I want this one to be the front, this will be the back. I'm gonna burnish everything into place. Okay. So I've trimmed this down to the right height, but I need to shorten it. So let's go ahead and mark their mark that, and I'm um, gonna have just a slight seam here between the two patterns. Mm. Okay, I'm going to trim that. Be right back. Okay, um, I'm going to ink this and lay it down, and um, then we'll work on covering the back real quick, and then the inside liners. So, a little bit of cleanup. 
which will help me hopefully find my ink. <laughs> which I don't, here it is. Buried in all the goodies. I really like this too, but I wanted to do some embellishing and I think it's too hard to put anything on top of this. It's just too pretty. So, um, I mean, you can't put patterns on top of patterns. It's too much, too much. slightly over trimmed this but I can live with it because it's going to have a lot of flowers on the front Let's get something on the back. So I have more of this pattern, which I kind of, I kind of like having a unified front and back. I don't always have the luxury of that because I don't always have enough pattern, but I like this a lot too. So I think this is what I'm going to go with. So it looks like I need to trim this down. do our final check and I think I need a little bit more off I'm going to make it a little bit wider. This is what is ideal to me because the front is kind of a wider border. I'm going to make the back match. I think this will do it. Yeah, I'm going to ink that and put it down.
Pay attention to your directions, which way your book is going to open, which one's the front, back, because this is a directional pattern. Okay, that looks good. And we're going to embellish the back. Um, this is from one of the large ephemera cards. And I was going to use it on the cover. And in fact, I'm kind of going back and forth. I'm not sure. Um, but if I don't use it on the cover, I'm definitely going to use it back here. Okay, let's swing back around to the front. And I'll show you what I have planned so far. So I'm going to use a mixture of these Graphic 45 flow flowers. And I'm going to use a whole bunch of them. And basically what I want to do is design a, a curved spray that comes down diagonal. And then this is from the die cut package. So that's going to be a feature right there. These are also from the die cut package. So is this. Um, I've popped it up and put it on uh, black cardstock. So that's going to be kind of the centerpiece. This is a die cut that's going to go slightly tucked in here. And then I've got even more flowers um, to sort of fill this spray out that's going to come across. I'm planning on using this as a feature down here. And then I've got a couple of things that I'm playing around with. I've got some um, clock keys and um, I've got this keyhole. Um, originally I thought about putting the keyhole in the middle here, um, but it didn't quite look right. So I may or may not use that. If I don't use it on the cover, I may use it on the side, um, on the spine. So that is, and that's rather thrown together, but that is pretty much uh, the landscape um, or the composition of what I think the cover is going to be. So I'm going to start um, arranging these things a little bit more and then start to glue down a couple of the key pieces and then we'll start to work in the flowers and I'm going to take a break real quick and do some arranging and make sure I've got the right size flowers where I want them and then I'll come back and construct this with you guys. Hey guys I'm back. Um, so I fussy cut a, a, a few things out that I think I'm going to add as we start to lay these things in but I want to get uh, put in place and I swapped this guy out for for this is what I was originally thinking and now I think I like this better but we'll get to that. Um, what I want to do is figure out these two pieces first and then basically everything is going to be uh, put around it. So what I want to do right now is figure out how far I want this to go into this frame and create this relationship and then I'll put, a, put this whole thing down as a unit. And I think that's about right. So I'm just going to pull it off collectively and I'm going to glue this side down right here. And I'm not, I'm just trying to find a point and that way I can still continue to adjust it. But I think I like that. Yeah. This gives me a little bit of play time too because this is actually quite slick. So I think that's going to be right. I'm going to tack down this edge as well. Okay. So now I've got a unit that I can play with. Okay. All right, I'm going to tuck this so I'm ready to, I think, glue this down. I like to leave some space around the edges just in case I want to tuck something behind it, like a flower or something. Um, I can do that without running into where the glue is. Okay, there we go. Yeah, looks pretty good. So that's our first large element. 
Okay, and this is one of the things that I was thinking about tucking behind it slightly, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, and that I get uh, again is uh, backed by cardstock. Okay, I am liking it. I'm going to bring this towards me. I've just got a couple of things inside here holding this all in place. I'm going to start to arrange the flow. I think I'm going to move that a little bit. Take a smaller, even smaller bud. Okay. Then this. little white buds. There's something flying around in here just driving my nose crazy. You guys are probably seeing it. <laughs> okay, hold that in place a little bit. I like this. So this is a lot of experimenting, right? Just poking and pushing things around until you're happy with the way it looks. But it's a good idea to get your edges and then your big pieces in. So that's what we have so far. These are not glued down yet. They're just reserved for this space. So I think I'm gonna get all my whites together so I know how much I have to spread. I think I like that. You could use a medium here. And I'm just using art glitter glue. I use it for everything. Oh, 
Oops. Didn't get enough glue there. We're in the right spot anyway. Nope, I don't like it. Don't like it. It's too small.
need another white. And I don't think I have one. So that's going to have to do, I think. These are leaves that I trimmed off um, this one continuous piece. I like to use them as fill, help cover up any uh, blank spots and camouflage any wire that's exposed. And it just fluffs everything up, so to speak. Adding a, just an additional layer of dimension. And then this came off of one of the backs of the flowers. And I like to actually take them off and then place them where I want them. Um, and usually the bigger, the, the greenery, the, the larger flower that I want to put it behind.
Actually, that looks a little too big, so I'm going to make it a little smaller. There we go. It's not sticking out quite so far. Okay, and then I have a couple more of these really small pieces that I'd like to tuck here and there. So I'm going to place them, make sure I'm comfortable with where they're going. This needs to be shortened, so. And then I'll glue them into place. like that. I'm not crazy about that. I have another white one. I might like that better. Yeah, I like that better. Right now I'm just trying to get a feel for scale, um, which size flower do I want here? That or this? I think I like the really small one. from behind this white petal. There we go. What do you guys think? It's not my usual, but I like it. Okay, so I'm, I wound up with an extra. So this is, I had the white, it was um, in my stash. And uh, the peach is the, uh, it's not, Peach. It's per perfect pink or uh, something like that. I can't remember the name. Now I fussy cut these from um, the 12 by 12 collection pack and I think I'm just going to stash a few of these here and there just to make it a little more interesting. I think I'm going to put this partially inside the frame. Probably lower. Mm, let's see if I like this one better. I like that. There we go. So you can see you don't need a whole flower to get, you know, something interesting. And I've got this. Not sure, maybe too much. Not sure.
I need uh, Ah, I kind of like that. What do you guys think? All right, so that's that. I fussy cut this guy out, and I think I'm going to put him here just because I think we need something uh, else here. And then I decided not to use the key. It's just not working out. I um, didn't have these clock keys, which I really like, um, but I wasn't sure how to use, where to use. Really what I want to display is the clock key itself, not uh, the top of the key. Hmm. What do you guys think? I like it. I'm gonna put some filigree corners on, but I don't have any handy at the moment. I'm gonna add a couple more pieces, leaves. Oh, that's loose. This feels naked. <laughs> to get some ribbon see if I can't find some ribbon that I like so I think the only thing that'll work on the cover is this gold so let's try it I'm just gonna loosely gather it so I can see what the colors look like See, that's two gold against the white, so I do think I like this. I'm going back and forth. If I had a big, beautiful bow, that's where it would go. Let me go through my stash. <laughs> Sorry about that. I forgot to hit record. Um, I pointed out earlier that this is fussy cut from one of the six, or four by six um, ephemera carts, and I just placed it here on the back. And then um, I'm taken this uh, die cut and I think I'm just gonna um, put it right about here just adding a little bit more texture and dimension and I kind of bowed it out a little bit oops so it'll stand out a little bit more there we go so it looks straight there we go a little bit Okay, now I'm going to put a little bit under the very top of the, uh, the handle. There we go. All right. And like I said, it's kind of bowed out, and it'll hold its shape um, because of the, the texture of the paper. All right. So the last thing I'm toying around with is adding a couple more clock keys. Um, and I just, I'm not sure. Um, I'm trying to figure out if it throws... It out of balance because these keys are so much heavier than this one. I do like this one, but all by itself it doesn't seem quite right. The other thing is I still need to get my filigree corners in, and I think maybe that'll be just the, the right balance that I'm looking for. So I'm going to call the cover finished and upload it, and um, when we get back together, sorry that's a rogue leaf, we need to do the insides. So I'll be back soon. 
Hey everybody, I got my papers, yay, planned for the inside. So I'm gonna use this, it's probably one of my favorite patterns here. And I really like the small squares, but I'm all out of that blue. So we're gonna use this and I'm just gonna keep these nice and simple. Um, so I'm gonna start by laying down the floral side and then I'll trim this piece to fit. And the plan currently is to leave um, a black um, color block line here. And I put my base in and it didn't quite reach, so I just added a little bit of Sharpie to solve that problem. So I'm gonna turn this all sideways. directional because the flowers kind of go up and down in every direction but this looks good so I'm going to go ahead and leave it as is in this direction and I just put out um, a sneak peek on Facebook to share with you guys what's going on I'm hoping to have this done tonight uh, so it'll be up tomorrow got just a little bit more to go okay now let me set these aside now what I need to do is mark this and trim it down. I need to make sure it's outside of that score line, um, comfortably outside that score line. Okay, I'll trim that down. Put this in. Obviously, these are from 12 by 12. I didn't mention that, but they are. If I haven't mentioned it, I love my new Rototurn. So nice to have a sharp tool again. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing over here. We'll lay this in first, and then we'll trim the other piece to fit. Okay, and when I'm laying it in, dry fitting it, I'm looking for you know, do my angles look right? Um, do do I have a right angle on the corner of the chipboard? Because if I don't, I want to cut my paper at an angle so I can uh, mask that. Um, and everything looks pretty straight. I don't cut it on, on camera, but I cut my chipboard with box cutter and a blade, uh, uh, a metal ruler. Um, I found that trying to run it through my trimmers just ruins my trimmers. Um, but I can occasionally not do a good cut, unfortunately. But the key to cutting with a box cutter is don't try to be economical. Get Replace your bl blade very frequently. It'll take a lot of aggravation out of cutting um, your chipboard. Because the first two times I cut with a new blade, it just cuts like butter. So I know if I'm fighting, it's time to change. Or if I find myself having to stand up to get enough leverage, it's time to change the blade. That's very crooked. Okay. Well, I laid it in the trimmer and it's very crooked. So I don't know if I marked wrong. I'm gonna lay the ruler down. 
and C. Okay, we're good. Good to go. Oops, I need to. I'm going to nudge that over a little. Okay, so we've got the inside liners, we've got our beautiful cover here, and now we need to do something with the spine. And I think, I think I want to, I think I want to put my key here. Yeah, I'm really liking that. Let's see, do I want to put something under it? Like a piece of chipboard anything that would be good under the key under the keyhole not really so the other option I like to also ooh, well that's too much blue I was gonna say I really like to use the long pieces of chipboard but blue on blue won't work it'll be too it'll disappear basically and I'm looking at the stickers to see if there's something I like there I think I'm just going to place this here. And then at some point I'm going to go look for some rhinestones to put or pearls to put in where the screws would go. And then I'm going to call it done. I'll probably find a way to put a couple more things on here and you'll just have to wait for the walkthrough. That looks centered to me. Does it? It looks actually like it needs to go over just a bit. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna set this aside. Uh, when we come back, um, we'll install the pages. Okay, everyone, we're ready to wrap up the cover and um, go ahead and install the pages. So I want to make sure I've got my pages in the right order and they're in, in the right orientation. So that's page one, page two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and then lastly, page eight. So they're all in the right order. So we're ready to start installing. Okay. Let me get my pick tool and we'll go ahead and get started with page one. <clears throat> I almost did this last night and I said, yeah, I don't know, I'm a little tired. Let's wait and do it in the morning. I'm glad I did.
I always like to stand up so I can see the top and bottom, make sure I'm putting it in straight. That looks very good. Okay, one of the things I did last night while I was preparing everything to go into the book is I went ahead and covered the back of this banner and I just found a scrap of the same paper. <clears throat> Pardon me. Take my insert out so it's not sliding around on me. I'm going to move this insert too. just keeps tearing on me, sorry. There we go. I think I forgot to do the back side of the other one. I'll check real quick. I did it. Okay. And then this is our last page, our last pocket page, which is actually two pages. There we go. All finished. And you can see there's still some, there's room, plenty of room to add photos and have the book expand. Um, you can see there's a gap here and then also you can see there's plenty of room over here. So there is plenty of room for it to expand uh, from what it what it is currently to allow for uh, photos. So that's it, uh, finished for the cover.